Hello and welcome to today's podcast. What I want to talk about today is what is a spinal instability? It seems like there's all this information out there about spinal instability. As a matter of fact, I did a video on spinal instability six years ago, put it out on YouTube, and it was one of 245 sightings of spinal instability at that time, and I thought it was absolutely crazy that there was not more information on simple spinal instability and the understanding that it was the number one cause of chronic pain and disability in the world today. So what is spinal instability? Now, what I'm going to talk about today in today's episode is we could say spinal instability, obviously if, if I fracture your spine or your spine were fractured and your cord were about to be severed, you would have catastrophic spinal instability. Those types of cases would be in the surgery room that day. So we're not going to talk about catastrophic spinal instability due to fractures. What we're going to talk about today is spinal instability due to ligament damage. So spinal instability by definition is excessive motion to the spine. So when the spine is, is designed to actually move in very specific, very minute movement patterns all combined together, very, very complex, but very simple at the same time. And the thing that holds all of these spinal components, all of these bones and joints in the right location for that movement pattern are the ligaments. And when the ligaments are damaged, there's excessive motion. And that excessive motion allows the, the spine to now move in a way that it was not designed to move, which can irritate the nerve, which can cause pain and inflammation. So spinal instability itself is a clinical entity. It's not something that you pick up on x-ray or on MRI alone. It's an entity that you pick up, you say, okay, is there excessive motion? Now the best test for excessive motion is flexion extension x-rays, a stress radiology and very accurate measurement of what are called translation and angular patterns. So the spine can move back and forth when it moves. That's called a translation pattern. And it also angles when it moves. That's called an angular pattern. So we can have abnormal translation or abnormal angulation patterns. And the more abnormal the pattern is, the more that we know, the more ligament damage there was. Now, these types of patterns are not picked up on MRI. They're picked up on stress radiology. They're picked up on standard x-rays. And standard digital x-rays are the best imaging, best primary imaging tool to, to image this. Very inexpensive, very easy to do. Now, when providers get imaging done, when medical doctors get imaging done, they rely on radiologists to read those images or to measure those images. Osteopaths, same thing. Physical therapists, same thing. Chiropractors sometimes try to do this themselves. It's very, very recommended, especially in the Indian market, that it be done in independent of the doctor. So doctors can only be good at so many things, right? And what we want in the injury market is we want the doctors to be very good at treating the injuries, not necessarily great at doing all of the radiology studies or all of the imaging studies that are possibly out there. So you can't be all to, to you know, be all in everything in the market, but essentially a spinal instability is very easy. It's excessive motion. And if you have excessive motion that causes a motor problem with the nerve, so in other words, something's not able to function now. My arm is not, I can't move my arm as, as well. I'm not as strong with the muscle. That's a motor problem. And each spinal level has a motor nerve associated with it and it can be tested. So the doctor tests, does a motor challenge, different types of muscle tests for each level to see if that muscle group is strong on both sides. We also have sensory tests. So there's, when you have a nerve, there's a motor component, there's a sensory component, and there's a visceral component to it. So the motor is making things move. The, the sensory is, is sensing things so that the body can make control adjustments. And then the actual visceral is all of the body's organs to help the body's organs function better. So all nerves have those three capacities. So spinal instability is a clinical entity. As I said before, it means that you have excessive motion on an imaging study that's now causing a motor sensory or a pain problem at that level. 
So you have to have two things. You have to have the imaging and you have to have a doctor that does a very good exam and knows how to do a spinal instability exam. Not all that common today. Um, so we, you know, you have, we have to grow doctors that know how to do this very simple exam procedure. It's a very simple procedure, but not a lot of doctors do it currently in the market and it should be done every single day. Any injury patient should have this done right away. So once you have a spinal instability, how do you get rid of it? Well, you treat it. Now the ligaments have already been damaged, there's already excessive motion. So are you going to treat the excessive motion and make that go away? No, that's generally permanent. But the motor, sensory, or pain problem is not permanent. That can be transient based on the care. So the care is gauged at rehabilitating the function of the nerve to not cause pain, to not lose power or force is in a motor deficit, or to regain its ability to sense. So a spinal instability is no longer a spinal instability when the patient becomes asymptomatic. And that's what good doctors are trying to get patients to do, get to be asymptomatic. Really good injury doctors can actually treat spinal instability very, very well. Now, the good injury doctor also knows that that spinal instability is the number one cause of chronic pain and has often been the thing that is most undiagnosed in chronic pain patients. And every patient knows and everyone in the market knows that if you don't have a proper diagnosis for the condition, I don't care if you have cancer, diabetes, spinal, uh, spinal pain, no matter what the condition is, if the doctor is not diagnosing it correctly, remember the diagnosis is to look at the symptom and then come back to the most common physical cause and start there. So if the doctor does not have a good diagnosis, the chances of getting help are very slim. So we need a lot more doctors. In my Smart Injury Doctors program and Smart Injury Lawyers program, throughout the country, we are now teaching doctors and lawyers exactly how these procedures should be done so that they can understand exactly how and what a spinal injury patient needs. Again, today all I wanted to do was focus on one topic, oh, spinal instability. I want to finish, I just had a, a, a one last thought. For the chiropractic community, the idea a spinal instability is what a spinal subluxation was and is. Today, there's so much confusion in the chiropractic market on do we treat a subluxation, don't we treat a subluxation, it's a bad word, it's a good word, <laughs> and I look at it and say, look, a spinal subluxation has always been and is always been defined as a vertebra that's either misaligned through malstatic position or malmotion that causes nerve interference. So it's a misalignment either in position or in motion that causes nerve interference. The nerve has three things, motor, sensory, and, and visceral. So a spinal subluxation is identical to a spinal instability. There is no difference. So anybody that says, well, I'm having a hard time, I don't understand spinal uh, subluxation, definitely doesn't understand spinal instability because they're the same, they're identical. And so you, if you patients, if patients out there, I'm saying, look, this is the number one cause of chronic pain and disability in the world today. And we need a lot more professionals that understand this very simple procedure. It's simple to diagnose and it's simple to evaluate and it's very simple to treat. The key to it, obviously, with any condition is early detection and early proper treatment leads to much better outcomes. And that's what we need in the market today. So doctors, lawyers, insurers, that's why I wanted to go over the simple term of spinal instability today. I hope it helps and I'll see you on the next episode.